Hey guys, this is the Brazilian Hot Dog 724. Uh, I kind of wanted to do a little overview of my remote collection now. Um, because I haven't actually shown really my remotes for a while. And some of you are kind of probably wondering what I got. So, um, just I'm going to kind of do a quick scan of the stuff I have. First, I still have, do have actually the box for the 485LM. So, yeah, but I have... My 6520. Um, hold on one sec. I'm gonna get this thing out of the box and then take a look at it. Alright. So. coming out of this thing. Um, there's common, and then there's one for each button on the keypad. And I think this is supposed to like snap shut, but that thing broke off, so. <laughs> um, and this is the programming box. Now, let's see if I can get this open. We have um, so we have these three terminals, which hook to the opener. Um, the first two are for just a regular opener. The third um, is if you have an opener that you have to push twice to close, and then these are for repeating the numbers. So if you want to repeat number one. And number three, you would move the little jumpers over to there. And then we have, this is where you set your code. It says first, second, third, fourth. That's the order of the numbers, and you can skip over one if you're repeating, which they give you an extra terminal, actually. I'm pretty sure you can only repeat two of them, because let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, ten terminals here, including the commons. So there's eleven for this. And, you know, so there's, if you use all four of these terminals, there's going to be an extra terminal here. But, and it says... Limited 90 day warranty. And then this piece just holds the wire in there. But this would hang on the inside of the garage. Um, pretty much right next to where the keypad is. Um, so I got this thing from eBay. New in a box. So I'm going to get this back in and then I have some other stuff to show you. Alright, so here's the 950CB that I got the other day. Um, it's dated 01 of 02. And I actually found this just sitting on the ground outside. And I opened it up and it didn't have a battery. So um, I figured it was nobody's so I took it and it's mine now. So it, I mean, it's a pretty good remote. Um, let's see, I have a, this is the manual for the 6527, um, so yeah, they just, so, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool right there, and I have, um, let's see what these are. Alright, this is for those rollers. Um, oh, this is for my G button remote. Um, that I got from eBay a while back. 
And hold on, someone texted me. Alright. Um, I have a couple uh, instructions for the um, ET79. Right there. In the back is mounting it. I got these when the ET79s were in the box. They're not brand new, but they are in the box. These, or this, is for a genie receiver. I don't actually have the receiver they're talking about in this. Um, it was just in the box that I have my uh, 12 dip switch receiver in. And um, that's for my LiftMaster uh, 48501. So, I'm gonna stuff back up here, down here, a quick scan of what I got, my 3089 Ohm style, AT79, my 61 this one doesn't always work, I'm not sure right now if it's a dead battery or not, that doesn't always work to work, my 850CB doesn't always work either, it's working now, that's my Stanley 1005, it, it's destroyed, but I could barely make out the date, it's 1977, and I found the model number on the internet. There's my ET85, right there, Stanley 1050, ET79, this is my multi-code, um, 1089 from 1986, this was one of my very first remotes in my collection. This one is my Homelink remote, right there, I have a Chamberlain 50CB with a blue case and a green light, this thing is super rare, and it's cracked, but oh well, these things are super hard to find, I also have a 53LM, it's a really good remote. And my 51, which uh, these batteries dying on me for that one. It's my Sears 139.53706 and my GT90-4. This is one of my favorites. If anybody um, that's on eBay ever sees like a um, a battery cover for this, let me know, because I do want to get a battery cover for this still. I'm not as concerned with the clip, but um, I have this one. I find it funny how it says for home link training, and then the guts are exactly the same as one of those, but this is pretty rare. I would not have bought this if it wasn't rare, but there's Cool to see one in a red case. Have a couple of these ones. This is my G3684 my Alistair remote. I have down here my wall buttons and keypads. There's my 398LM. Um, I did hook this one up to the battery. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna show you what it does. All right, so I'm just hooking this wire up, and then it's starting up. And it's on, so I can set the time on it, which it is 10.06, so... It's AM, but it's 10.06, and it is... It, it actually is 70 in here, so... This thing can read the temperature right when it's running off of a battery. Which is funny, because LiftMaster1280 had um, a button just like this on his Craftsman that couldn't. So, And I can actually use these side buttons, like I push this one, it'll say motion sensing off. And then motion sensing on, it'll go into learn mode. It says learn remote control, press learn button again to confirm. Um, I can change the language on it, actually. 
and I can switch it from, it's hard to do this with one hand, from Fahrenheit to Celsius, 22 Celsius, 71 Fahrenheit, so I think that's really cool that this thing will work off of a battery. So I am going to unhook this quick with one hand, and then just tighten those back down. This video is going to take forever to upload. Um, let me put that back in auto focus. Alright. Here is my 377LM. Okay, this was made in 2014. This is the keypad that I replaced. The 940 ESTD. It turns on. 2014, my universal keypad. Okay, I think I have one, two, three, four programmed into it. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool keypad there. And I have my G1 that was from my old opener. This one I hooked up to the battery. And the light doesn't turn on because it's hooked to the green terminal that goes to the lock. But that one's pretty cool. This one I'm going to hook up because it's pretty cool what it does, actually. So I'm going to do that quick. So you can see it turns on. I'm going to hit the button now. And I can turn these switches on and it'll actually it'll light up too. And they all, all the buttons are, all the lights are synced. So, you know, that's, that's really cool. So, and this is a pretty nice button as well. Um, I don't know when it was made or what the model is and all. Alright, here's my 68LM. And it, this one also does turn on, um, from the battery. If you're in the group chat, you will I tried it with this one. It was actually the first one I tried it with. But it's really dim, the light on it. It's really hard to see. So, Yeah, but this is a really cool button. It's pretty much a 58LMS Plus just made to mount on an uh, electrical box like this one here. Fit over it. Um, I have my 888LMS. Actually, these do something really interesting when I hook them up to the battery. I would have hoped to program it to, or program one of my remotes into it, but it won't charge. And so I'm going to hook it up quick and show you guys what it does. Right, let's see if I can do this with it. And, um, work. Hold on. Alright. So I tighten it up, and, yeah, there you see it's blinking. I'm not sure. So yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be beeping like this. Yeah, see now it's... I'm not sure if it's going to start... Uh, flashing now or not. Doesn't look like it, but um, what it does, it might be easier if I just explain it, is... I know it's not going to turn on, but... What it does is it's going to blink slow for like 30 seconds and then it's going to beep and what that means is it just won't work with whatever opener. So, I mean, it doesn't recognize the battery as an opener, so. That was kind of, oh, there you go. See, so I just hit the button and it's a, uh... oh, see, now that now it's going to start doing it. No, it's gonna. These two lights are the red and the yellow ones are gonna start blinking. Yeah, so 
these are gonna blink for about 30 seconds and then it's gonna beep at me so we'll wait for a second And then it just does that, and then it waits for a couple seconds, and then it's going to flicker, and then it'll start blinking. So, I mean, yeah. I really wish that it had worked. And actually, this is really weird. I turn it, I take that out, and so I took the wire off, and there's capacitors in there holding charge. But now the wire's off, and this is blinking. So now we're going to give it a little bit more time to beep again. Yeah, see now it's, so this is, this means that it's charging here. So, but it won't stay on long enough for it to actually charge all the way and let me program something into it. But that is really, um, really weird. Um, so... Yeah. So it's going to do that for a while. So other buttons I have. Um, this Moromatic. It's a really rare one. My Genie button I hooked up to the battery, but for some reason it gets really warm after just a couple seconds. And none of the other ones do. Not even the smart one. I had that one actually hooked overnight and it wasn't warm. And this one... No, that one's dying. So, yeah, it gets really warm, so I don't know if it just always does that because the light on it or not, but... Uh, this is going to be a long video. I have 893LM, a couple of 33LMs. These are really cool remotes. I really like those. Um, I have... This one for my old opener. This one goes to that. Or this one went to that 3255 that was in the barn, but this one stopped working. I have my Chamberlain 953 older style. It does work. And my really little Moran Tech. My new 953. This is the other remote that came with my opener. I have an 895 Max. 811LM. I have my tombstone here. This one is the new 81LM here. It's got a gray button, black case. It looks like a 971LM. And they make them in 1, 2, 3, and 4 button, I think. Here's the other one of these that actually does work. I have two of these. They're 953 CDs, but it says 950 on them. That's not right, though, so... Um, this is my Craftsman Universal remote. I have three, five, three, six, eight, one Bs. I have a brand new five, three, seven, seven, nine from 1992. You know, look at that clip is brand new, labels in perfect shape. So this is a really nice remote. Um, I have, this is actually, a, um, not sure how common these are. This is a 139.53681. There's no B in the model number. I have a couple Chamberlain clicker remotes. Uh, that one works. And this one has a dead battery. And then I have my 373LM. So, um, that's pretty much most of the remotes I have. I have some stuff in here. And this is mostly receivers. That's my 12 zip switches in there. Genie sensor box. My 882 is in here. I have 
couple boxes for the AT-79s. Um, Genie safety sensors. Genie code card receivers. I have a new tone receiver. 590R. Um, oh, this one. This is an electronic key. Model 33 receiver. And it, I have the remote that goes to it, but I actually don't remember what I did with that. So, I have home link bridges and stuff. It's a mess in here. A uh, couple more things that I have. Um, this is a newer 61LM. An older 53779. No label on this one. And, uh... Style 3089. This is the GT90 that came with my grandma's opener. My GT90 2. My GT90 3. Or this one's actually a GMT903. I have another GT90 1. And this is a really rare remote. It's a Pro Max. It's exactly the same as a GT90-1. It doesn't click, it's got contacts, but... Um, it's model PMT-90. So this is what came with the older G Pro Max openers. And... Oh, I do have some more stuff back here. I, my Alistair remote. Uh, I have... This one, I can actually read them all, ADX 9931. And one more. And, oh, this is the remote that goes to the electronic key receiver. This is model 30. Uh, says right there, dated October 1978. I've never taken this apart or anything. <laughs> that clip is wild. You know, this is a cool remote. Um, let's see if I have any other stuff at all. Um, nothing in there. Um, and I suppose I'll go down. Um, she gets my Jimmy screwdrive quick. Um, I'll try to make this quick. Um, So here's the screwdriver. I um, still have the case off on this. I haven't made a video of this for a while, actually, and I, I've never run this, plugged it in yet, because this thing just doesn't work. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm what I'm gonna um, if what I'm gonna do a video. I probably will end up doing a video on this this summer when I don't have anything to do, but I'll just see. But I have the case for it here. There's GX9000. Um, I have the serial number is here, or the date code, whatever. It's 1994. The dip switch is right there. Okay, I don't have this propped up pretty well to show that. But there is the trolley. This thing's full of grease, so I'm not going to mess with it right now. Um, this is my track drive limit switch that I have, the board from the track drive, the drive tape from the track drive, and this is the logo from the track drive that I grabbed, and then I have the arm from it. Actually, these Genie arms are pretty thick. You know, that's another advantage I see genie over chamberlain right now because their arms are thicker i also like how they have the longer curved arms versus longer straight arms i like longer curved arms better because it works i hear people i hear mixed opinions on what to do for low headroom for extended arm versus not but i to be honest this would work really well 
for a low head application and I just think that this one curved arm um, A, it looks a lot better than an extended arm and two, I like how you just can have one piece instead of having to bolt you know, two pieces together like you would probably would on a Chamberlain but I would I would do this for a low head room because it doesn't really matter much. Well, it probably doesn't matter much, but and I just think it looks better anyway. So other than that, I don't have any else that's new. Um, so I'm not sure when the next video is gonna be. Um, so if you guys have any video ideas, let me know in the comments, but, um, alright, this video is 26 minutes long, so I'm going to sign off here and wait an hour to upload this. See ya.